Hey guys, hope you're having a good time. Datsa here, and today I'm going to be talking about a very important question I think needs answers. Today we're going to be talking about growth, scalability, and why it's such an integral part of our lives. Now, even through ancient times, back when we were even drawing phallic cave paintings, every single thing that the human race produced was actually made by hand, absolutely. We can see this with the Roman Empire, and we can see this onward, and it's only been until recent times where we've been able to scale and mass produce a lot of the products we use today. A lot of this can be attributed to the Industrial Revolution. And although there was an Industrial Revolution for scaling and creating products for mass use, there was never really the same kind of revolution for people that make creative things. And here's where the issue lies. Artists and creative minds oftentimes aren't able to scale themselves to the same kind of level as finished production products. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that there hasn't been any kind of assembly line made or any kind of mass production model made for artists. Now, there are actually a few cases where artists have been able to scale their work to some certain degree. We see people making prints, for instance, and selling them in mass. And in other cases, we see some artists outsourcing their work entirely to other people. Now, this is all fine and dandy. However, it doesn't scale to the same kind of size as a full production model as we see in businesses. And this is where today's video lies, and that is scalability and growth as an artist in a world where there hasn't quite been an industrial revolution for artists. Now, in modern times, the average artist will probably go about scaling and making more money in two different ways. The first one being is to actually increase the amount of paintings you produce. So you can, instead of producing one painting per time period, you can start producing two or three or four, and this kind of stuff happens relatively naturally as you begin to paint more and more. Now the problem with this is that there's going to be a certain point in your life or a certain point in your painting career or creative career, whatever you're doing, that you're only going to produce so many as a single human being. The other way to do it is to actually increase the price of your paintings entirely. So you can see a lot of these contemporary artworks, that's what we'll call them, well, we see a lot of these contemporary artworks being sold for as much as millions of dollars. However, here's my proposal to you and here's the third way to increase yourself in the scalability way. Now, if you look at any service-based tech company that does stuff online, you'll notice a very recent recurring theme, and that is that their big focus is on scalability. Scalability over advertising, scalability, scalability over membership fees, scalability over everything. And what I mean by that is they try to take a share of the market of people and they try to scale it and have them come under their service even if they're not making money at that moment, and even if they're actually losing money, they're still in that position where they have an audience. One of the best case examples of this is actually Discord. If you'll notice, their money model is very, very primitive. They do have a very small premium membership, but it gives you not so much. Their biggest concern at the moment is to get this is to get market share and that's exactly what's happening they've developed a really nice service they've developed a very free and very open service and they're completely chopping away at skypes and team speaks market share one by one and they're scaling themselves to such a level that they have the opportunities to make money with this audience however they please now this is just in a pure business sense but as you as a creative mind you can scale yourself and get an actual audience and have the opportunities to do whatever you'd like. You can interact with them, you can start your own little art community, and you can even make money if you'd like. Although artists at this point in time cannot mass produce paintings like a business that's scaling an actual real object you can hold in your hand or something likewise, if artists treat themselves more like a service, a service of entertainment, a service to go to and have a smile or a laugh about, then they're put in the position where they can scale themselves very similar to a business. And when you do just this, when you scale yourself to a business, similar to a service business, you're put in the position where you can monetize or interact or grow however you'd please, and therefore have an influence and therefore monetize. So the big takeaway here is to scale yourself. And if you scale yourself, scale yourself maybe similar to a service business. Now this isn't the only right way to do things, absolutely. I think that there's more than one right way to get something done, but this is my take on it. And I'd really like to hear what you guys think. What did I say right? What did I say wrong? Maybe how you could implement this in your own life? I would really like to hear it. So say something in the comments, maybe message me on Discord, anything that works for you. 
I apologize that I wasn't able to really implement this idea into today's painting, but I would still like to talk about today's painting a little bit. Now the actual painting took two and a half hours, and this is the first time in a good while, let's say a few weeks, where I actually looked up references on tropical stuff and tropical buildings and skyscrapers and stuff like that. It didn't really shine through the way I wanted to. However, it's some kind of a interesting kind of building somewhere in the tropics, right? However, the water is a bit dark, so it looks kind of like a ground, but you know, it turned out okay, I'd say. Also, I'd like to give a really big shout out to my friend Ark. He made me this absolutely insane introduction music, and he actually produces a lot of really good tracks. Now, I'm going to link him down in the description. He's a really awesome guy, and what I did was I actually showed him some of the songs I listened to, and he remade them in like five minutes, started making me question my music taste. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Next week, we're actually going to be talking about why you should be afraid of the best version of yourself. So that's coming up, and I'll see you next weekend when the next video comes out.